So here's the finished board, and in the video you'll notice the tiny solder balls in between the pads, and you'll you'll find solder balls pretty much anywhere where there isn't solder mask, which is why it's important to have solder mask in between the pads. And this board hasn't been modified at all. It completely checked out. There were no shorts, um, even though you saw all the solder balls. This board would work just fine but it's still a good idea to remove as many of them as possible. And you can do that by just using some isopropyl to kind of dissolve the solder, uh, the flux. The flux residue is the only thing holding those tiny balls in place. And uh, once you kind of dissolve all the flux residue, you can use a uh, like compressed air. It does a really good job of just kind of blasting all the balls out. And if you just have a few like small solder balls, you can just, you know, use a toothpick. They pop right off. So, uh, you do want to be careful though if you have a lot of components that are uh, static sensitive because, uh, you know, the brush that you use to brush the board with can build up static. So, they actually have ESD brushes where the bristles are conductive so they don't actually build up a charge themselves. So this board is just a breakout board for the chips I'm using in my decimal to binary to hexadecimal converter. And I'm just going to use it to finalize my code and tweak my code until I'm happy with it. And I have an LED basically for all 16 outputs of the chip. And it uses SPI. Alright guys, well I hope you liked the video. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll see you next time.